All right, NFL Week 5. Hopefully you took advantage of the special $5 offer at Wager Talk earlier in the week and got down to my 3% Thursday night winner on the Falcons. If not, no worries. Still on a 117.95 and 5 overall run with the free picks here on this show. A reminder, I'm also number one at wagertalk.com in NFL since the start of the regular season. Not to mention number two with all football this season. I've gone a spectacular 9-2, and two, 82% thus far with NFL size. But let us now roll through the Power 5 for Sunday. You can go ahead and let me know what you think of these selections down below in the comment section. And if you agree, then don't be afraid to smash that like button. Here we go. Number one, Carolina plus one, uh, plus one four. Carolina plus four at Chicago. Let's try that again. I am not ready to trust the Bears as a favorite just yet. Let's look at their two wins. One came without an offensive touchdown against the Titans. Then last week, they beat an injury-depleted Rams team. Thought that more had more to do with the sorry state of the Rams than it did any real progress for the Bears. Although, I'd say offensive coordinator Shane Waldron called a better game than he did against the Colts, for sure. Nevertheless, I want to talk about a Panthers offense that has clearly looked better under Andy Dalton than it did with Bryce Young. Uh, they've gone from dead last, the Panthers, in yards per game the first two weeks with Young to fifth the last two weeks with Dalton. Scored 60 points the last two games. They've got the running game going. Chuba Hubbard, back-to-back 120-plus yard performances on the ground. We haven't seen that from a Panthers running back since the days of Christian McCaffrey. Now, I'd say this game has the potential for a shootout, but Bears quarterback Caleb Williams is averaging only 5.6 yards per pass attempt. I think that has a lot to do with the very shaky offensive line in front of him. Bears have the third lowest ranked offense coming to this game, guys. This is one Carolina could win. Take the plus four. Number two, Texans money line over the Bills. I know it feels like we're selling low, quote unquote, on the Bills who got humbled Sunday night in Baltimore. Baltimore was a winner for years truly, by the way. But this Bills team heads into Houston in really, really rough shape on the injury front. No wide receiver Khalil Shakir. That's big. No defensive tackles Ed Oliver and Austin Johnson. And no safety Taylor Rapp. Their secondary already isn't very good in Buffalo. And that Those are all because of injury and no Vaughn Miller who's suspended. This is all really bad news, guys, when getting set to face C.J. Stroud and a 3-1 and one Texans team. I know the Texans' three wins were by a total of 12 points over teams that are combined 4-8 and eight straight up. And they haven't been that impressive, quite frankly. For what it's worth, though, head coach D'Amico Ryans has gone on the record and said his team is, quote, fired up for this game. I'm expecting uh, a circle the wagons type performance from the Texans at home. Look for wide receiver Tank Dell, who missed last week's win over the Jaguars, to have a big game as he returns to the lineup. But this is all about the Bills' injuries for me. They're really going to struggle defensively in this game. I think Stroud and the Texans' offense get back on track, and Houston gets the W. Number three, here's an ugly one for you. Let's lay the field goal with the winless Jaguars. They are facing the Colts, another team with major injury concerns right now. Probably going to be Joe Flacco starting a quarterback in place of the injured Anthony Richardson. Uh, Flacco brings more experience, obviously, but I know it's fun to see old guys succeed. Okay, Flacco's basically my age, but... I watched him closely in Cleveland last year. The guy's a turnover machine, and he's not going to be able to hand the ball off to Jonathan Taylor, the Colts' great stud running back, because Taylor's out with an injury. Taylor's pretty much been the Colts' entire offense this far. He's fifth in the league in rushing. Now, the Jacksonville defense has shockingly yet to force a single turnover this season. That's a problem. But whether they end up facing Flacco or Richardson, I expect that to change. I think Jacksonville forces at least one turnover in this game. By the way... Indianapolis 0-9 straight up their last nine visits to Jacksonville, losing by an average of 16 points per game. They've even been shut out twice in that stretch. If you can't stomach the idea of laying points with a winless team and are more juice tolerant, I'd say go ahead, just play the Jags money line then. But I think head coach Doug Peterson saves his job at least for one week. I'm laying the three with Jacksonville. Number four, another ugly one. Cleveland plus three and a half at Washington. I'd play this smaller at plus three. But right now, DraftKings is dealing a three and a half, and I'd grab it. Look, I understand the Commanders are vastly improved with rookie quarterback Jaden Daniels. There's a chance they win the NFC East, guys. I, I, I readily admit that. And the Browns are trending in a very different direction. That would be down as embattled quarterback Deshaun Watson, not executing at all behind what is a banged-up offensive line. And he's throwing to receivers who can't catch. Other than that, the Cleveland passing game is going just great. But... 
The look-ahead line for this game was Washington minus one. I think it's moved a bit too far in their direction. The Commanders, they faced some really poor defenses over the last three games, uh, all of which they've won. Uh, they faced the Giants, the Bengals, and the Cardinals. Browns had one of the best defenses in the league last year, and they've allowed just 13, 21, and 20 points the last three weeks. And the Browns' offense has generally started games strong. They led 10-0 against Las Vegas last week. I think they should be able to run the ball effectively here against the Washington defense that is second worst in yards per carry allowed. Speaking of running the ball, maybe no Brian Robinson for the commanders here. Three and a half is just too much for this team to be favored by, even at home right now. Take the points. All right. Number five, let's skip the 4 p.m. Eastern time window and head right to Sunday night where it's time to fang fade another banged up team this week. That being the Dallas Cowboys. No Micah Parsons, no Demarcus Lawrence for the Cowboys. That is a devastating blow to a defense that was dead last, is dead last uh, in the league against the run. At least they were prior to facing the sorry Giants. Uh, so going into last week, this was the worst run defense in the league. Meanwhile, I look for the Steelers defense to have its way against Dak Prescott and the Cowboys offense that just isn't as good as it was last year. Plus, we're getting a big coaching mismatch. Mike Tomlin going against Mike McCarthy. Get this, guys. Tomlin is 10-1 and against the number all time following a game in which the Steelers trailed by 14 or more at the half. Bottom line, Tomlin gets his teams up following a disappointing performance. That's what we saw last week from the Steelers against the Colts. Meanwhile, McCarthy, when facing an opponent with a win percentage between 600 and 750, 0-7 against the number as Dallas head coach. He doesn't get his teams ready uh, when facing the best teams on the schedule. We saw in the playoffs last year that just incredible meltdown against Green Bay. I'd play Pittsburgh money line here as they often win close. Let us now recap the Power 5 for NFL Week 5. Number one, Carolina plus four at Chicago. Number two, Texans money line against the Bills. Number three, Jacksonville minus three against Indianapolis. Number four, Cleveland plus three and a half at Washington. Number five, Steelers money line over the Cowboys. Again, you can let me know what you think of those selections down below. Comment. Don't be shy about dropping your best bets for NFL Week 5. And any questions on any other games I didn't touch on, those are welcome as well. My 4% NFL game of the week is currently locked and loaded. You can find that at wt.buzz slash bp. As I said earlier, I am number one in the NFL since the start of the regular season. Coming off the win with the Falcons on Thursday, now 9-2 and two with NFL sides. That's 82%. Your best move is to take advantage of Wager Talk's special offer where you can get the next seven days for $77. That's a $22 discount. Gives you not just all NFL, but all college football, all soccer, all MLB soccer heading to the international break, admittedly. But the MLB playoffs are rolling. Had just one play in the wild card round. It was a 4% best bet winner on San Diego Padres. It's a lot to be excited for. Head on over to wt.buzz slash BP to pick up that 4% NFL game of the week and maybe subscribe for a full seven days. That's going to do it for Sunday's edition of the Power 5. Hope you enjoyed it. Again, smash that like button if you did. And of course, make sure you're subscribed to the Wager Talk YouTube channel. Click that bell for instant alerts. That way, you are instantly alerted when your favorite shows like this one or the morning wager with me and Mark Zinno drop. So until next time, everybody, let's catch some tickets.